What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got some more Madden 22 news to talk about. We're going to be talking about five big things that were removed from the gameplay for Madden 22. Now we know every year EA Sports takes some things out of the game, sometimes for good reason, sometimes for bad reason. They just take stuff out that we don't want them to take out. But today we're going to be talking about those five things that they removed from the gameplay. And these are actually good things and things that I hope make the game a little bit better. Some of these have been complained about for a while now. So it's good to see these things finally finally get addressed and for them to take them away from the gameplay so we don't have to deal with them anymore. Now if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and turn the bell icon on if you don't want to miss any of the future Madden 22 uploads. We got some news dropping tomorrow and in a few days we get our first look at the entire scouting overhaul that EA Sports is going to reveal plus more gameplay coming soon so I know a lot of you guys don't want to miss out on any of that so if you don't make sure you subscribe and the bell icon's on so you do not miss those videos when they go live. Number one on the list are slow moving quarterbacks. Now, I don't mean Tom Brady or actual slow QBs. What I mean are the QBs that actually have good speed ratings, but in years past have actually felt slow because they didn't have the escape artist ability. This was a problem ever since Madden 20 when they introduced abilities and they made an ability called escape artist, which they gave to the elite escape artist type QBs like Lamar Jackson. The problem with this is you had guys like Daniel Jones, who has 88 speed or Dak Prescott, who has 83 speed. And those guys felt ridiculously slow for their speed. It felt like they couldn't actually scramble and get outside of the pocket and the reason for that is because they kind of nerfed QB speed so that they can make the escape artist ability stand out more well they have done away with that they've kind of brought the QB speed back up to where it should be escape artist definitely still gives you a little more acceleration it feels a little bit more of a boost but fast QBs actually feel fast again and you can scramble with them so that is something that's been removed and it's a good change the rest of the list is coming up shortly but let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor I want to give a huge Huge shout out to Cove for sponsoring today's video. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I need a good Bluetooth speaker in my life. And that's why I love the commuter from Cove. My favorite thing about this, look at this quick little twist. Boom. Now you have two speakers. So it's great for when you're out by the pool. You can put one on one side of the pool, one on the other side of the pool. And speaking of which, this bad boy has a water resistance rating of IPX7, meaning it's great around a hot tub. It's great around the pool. It can get wet a little bit, but you just don't want to actually take it into the water with you. Now we're going to go ahead and put it back together. Boom. It's that easy. Quick twist. Now you have one speaker. So when it's one speaker, it creates a 360 surround sound effect which is great for on the beach or at parties if you want to split it into two it gives you the left and right audio type of feel so it's all up to what you like best another great thing are these subwoofers that's on each end it creates a lot of bass this thing has a lot of knock to it and that's what i like i like a little bass when i'm listening to my music so this is perfect for me you can also bring this up to 32 feet away from your connected mobile device or computer so you don't have to be right up on it with your phone or tablet so again great for parties great for the beach now cove is going to hook you guys up this only goes for 230 dollars but they're going to give you guys 67% off which is insane you can buy this for $75.90 if you use my link below in the description coveaudio.com slash Eric Rayweather or you could just simply use my code Eric Rayweather at checkout on their site 67% off what are you waiting for Number two on the list is they removed a lot of the multiplayer catches or two-man animations as we've come to know them between the wide receivers and the defensive backs. Now, for years, we've been complaining about this because wide receiver and DB interactions felt very forced. It didn't feel organic a lot of times. You got the two-man suction canned animations. It took a lot of control out of your hands on both offense and defense. Now, yes, there's still two-man animations in Madden 22, and they do still happen often, but they have reduced them greatly in some areas and they flat out remove them in some areas altogether reading here from their website it says for catching controls madden nfl players desired more control and more organic outcomes in the passing game to fulfill that desire we've made a lot of changes to significantly decrease the frequency of multiplayer catches there will be no more rack run after catch multiplayer catches no more contextually questionable short yardage multiplayer catches and less slowdowns by receivers with a step or two of separation what you will see are more single player catching scenarios where both players are independent playing the ball or seamlessly playing the receiver with catch tackles catch knockouts and mid-air collisions specific to mid-airs we've added some functionality so that the intended outcome of the interaction will be respected on any tackle that takes place during the catch so you don't have to rely on a specific animation to get the correct play outcome 
So do you remember when you would try to throw maybe like a bomb, right? You had a guy beat by a few yards and you want to throw it out in front of him, let him catch it in stride and run for a touchdown. But a lot of times the DB behind you, you would get this animation where the DB a few steps behind you would get this kind of suction warp animation where he would just be able to wrap you up. Like your receiver would slow down just enough for him to catch up and wrap you up as soon as you caught the ball. A lot of times you'd kind of reach out with your receiver with one hand when you got this animation, you'd reach out with one one hand to snag it and the DB would just kind of suction behind you and wrap you up from behind those types of things are gone now but more importantly the two-man animations on aggressive catches where we know in the past you've seen defensive backs get the better end of this and it was hard to throw aggressive catches you'll see a little bit less of that now because now both players can independently go for the ball so whoever is the better user ideally should be able to win the interaction instead of the game just kind of forcing you to like warp together in the air and just play out an animation that's either predetermined to be an interception or a one-handed catch or whatever so while there still will be some two-man animation scenarios in the game they've greatly reduce them and they flat out just remove them in some areas so this should cause for more organic wide receiver and db play in madden 22. Now, number three on the list kind of goes hand in hand with this, and that is that they have removed the dominating defensive backs. Now, because of what they've done with the two-man animations and stuff like that, no longer should you see defensive backs, especially smaller ones, flat out dominating big wide receivers. But it's not all just because they reduced the two-man animations. They also did some more work with respecting the height and kind of the wingspan of some of these receivers so that bigger receivers do have the advantage to go up and get the ball. Reading from their site here, it says, lastly, we've done some tuning to improve the catch height threshold so that big receivers will have a larger catch radius and defenders attempting to swat the ball will have a larger range to reach the ball to knock it away. So for example, if you've got a defensive back that's 5'9 or 5'10 and you're going up against a Mike Evans who's 6'5, he's going to have a lot harder of a time going up and getting that ball. You should be able to box him out and go up and get it. And when I played the beta for the couple weeks that it was available, I definitely know Notice this I got in practice mode for a bit and just threw jump balls for like an hour with you know receivers that were 6'3, 6'4, 6'5, just to kind of mess around with it. And I definitely noticed that the receiver was able to win these jump ball situations way more than they've been able to do in the past few Maddens. It hasn't been since Madden 16 when the aggressive catch was introduced and it was completely overpowered have I seen receivers actually winning jump balls at this rate yes good defensive backs can still go up and knock it out but you're gonna have more of a chance with the big receivers to actually use their height to your advantage and I know I've seen this complained about for years and years and years so I think this will be a welcome change for a lot of people in Madden 22. Number four on the list is slow route running. They've completely removed that from the game. Now, I'm not going to say that the route running is exactly where it needs to be and that it can't still get better, but building on what they did for Madden 21, adding the next gen route running and next gen route trees, They've built on that and actually have done a lot with route running and releases this year. Now, I don't know if you've noticed in the past Madden games for a while now, but route running has been very, very sluggish. The wide receivers don't really run their routes with much purpose. They don't really release off the line with much purpose. And that has also been a big contributing factor to why user defenders were able to kind of run all over the field. Yes, user defenders were kind of overpowered in general, but the fact that receivers didn't really run their routes with any kind of like like super effort I guess you could say like really getting into their cuts and really planning hard and kind of you know accelerating it was easier to kind of jump around and bait routes with a user defender well that's something they really focused on in Madden 22 especially for the more elite route runners you'll notice when they actually make their cuts how they really accelerate through their cuts depending on the route some of the routes they're definitely going to round out their cuts a little bit more but even in those situations when they're changing that direction ever so slightly they're accelerating through it and kind of giving more of a burst with the foot plant and it's actually allowing them to create more separation both versus man defense and just even in zone defense they're able to get to the area of the field the open area the soft spot in the zone they're able to get there a little bit quicker and more efficiently because they're actually running their routes with purpose i know they also did work with getting actual releases for the wide receivers so you'll notice if you watch how the receivers release off the line especially the high end you know the top 
best of the league wide receivers. These guys release off the line much like they do in real life and their different ways. They've motion captured it however they made it happen. But you'll just notice that the route running in general, it's not as slow as it used to be. They actually run with more purpose and more oomph, if you will. And this actually really helps open up the passing game a lot more for Madden 22. Number five, they have removed the over the top adjustment cheese. Now, if you don't know what that is, let me explain it to you. On defense, you can shade your coverage different ways. You could shade it over top, you could shade it underneath, etc. When you shade it over the top, basically you're telling your defensive backs don't get beat over the top. The problem with this is that they would still play the underneath stuff pretty aggressively as well. And this was one of the big reasons man defense was so good in Madden 21, because you could pressure defense, tell them to shade over top. So it'd be very hard to get over the top and beat them and take advantage of them for pressing a fast receiver like a Tyree kill. But even the underneath routes, they would still mirror these routes very well. And you couldn't really take advantage of the fact that they were playing over top. Well, now they've removed that on their site under core improvements. It says they decreased the effectiveness of the overtop coverage adjustment when guarding routes with cuts. So now if you shade over top and you're going to have these breaking routes underneath, they're not going to be able to mirror those routes. So you're going to have to kind of pay for telling your defense to play over top. You might only want to play over top in situations where it makes sense to instead of just doing it every play. So I think that's another good thing they removed. Definitely should be more of a chess match. You shouldn't be able to just do one thing and then defend multiple things. Shouldn't work that way. Now that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of the other things right here on screen and I will see you guys next time.